Mixing flash with ambient light is the most common situation for every photographer and it's uh, an essential skill to have. Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back. Uh, firstly, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who voted in the community tab for to choose the topic of this video today. Your support means the world for us and we try to uh, create more videos you guys uh, like and enjoy. Without any further ado, let's just get started. We have uh, Lydia with us today and she's wearing this uh, pink uh, bright dress because we want to create some uh, color contrast uh, in, uh, in the images to help serve her from the uh, background. My equipment uh, for today, I have the Canon R5 with the 85, 1.2 and 7200 lenses. I'm uh, using the nano trigger and I have my main light. It is the Godax V1 Pro with the Parapop uh, 28 inch uh, saw box. We're gonna go over the setup uh, in, in a minute. And also I have my backup light and like a fill uh, in light. I have an uh, AD100 here on the standby. We're gonna go in a minute when I use it and why I use it. When you're on location, the first thing you have to assess is the direction of the ambient light. Right now we have the light coming from uh, our uh, left here, from uh, this open space, and it has a direction. It is, is coming from left to right in the picture. So the uh, common sense is to have uh, the, our main light in the same direction of uh, the ambient light because we want to create a, a wraparound light uh, uh, on uh, Lydia's face. When you're shooting outdoors, you have to uh, you work with the ambient light, with the existing light, you don't have to fight it. So if you, I start to uh, uh, position my flash on uh, the other side of uh, Lydia's face, on the opposite direction of the ambient light, you're gonna start fighting, you're gonna see that it's too flashy, you're gonna see that something uh, doesn't uh, work right and you have uh, crossing shadows on her face. And the best way is to work uh, with uh, what you have in location. I'm gonna take a, a meter reading for the ambient, just the ambient, no flash, and I have, uh, I can, um, with the aperture at 1.8, I can shoot uh, with uh, 1 over 80 of a second shutter speed at ISO 100. This is just for the ambient light. I want to assess what I have without the flash. And I'm going to take a, a picture. I'm going to look like this. The reason uh, I'm taking an uh, ambient exposure and I'm taking a picture because I want to make sure that the background uh, all going to uh, look uh, nice right in the middle. And this situation with this dark background and Lydia being the brightest spot in, in the scene, the in camera meter all might be full. I wanna, if you don't have a an, uh, handheld meter, you can use a gray card, but I recommend to have a uh, handheld meter because I think it's a very uh, essential tool for any photographer. And um, I wanna make sure first the background looks right. You can over or underexpose the background, uh, the, you know, by your liking, the way you want it. I kind of like write it, like it right now, like flat in the middle, you know, and uh, I, Looking at the back of the camera, I think it looks uh, good. Don't forget, don't get full. The preview on the back of your camera is just a glorified JPEG, so it's not the picture you get. You need to make sure that you understand what the, your camera, your particular camera, shows in the back of the screen. So I like the background. I think the, everything is good. I'm not worried about the composition right now or anything else because I want to make, establish my baseline the exposure for the ambient, the exposure for the flash, and after that I'm gonna start working, you know, with the angles and uh, composition, and I'm gonna, we're gonna start uh, posing. I'm gonna turn on the flash and uh, I will see what kind of uh, settings I have to dial in to uh, make it uh, more natural. I'm gonna use this light as a filling light, or not gonna be like it's a, my main light, but it's a filling light kind of like, because I'm trying to mix the flash with the ambient. I'm not trying to overpower the ambient with the, with the flash. I'm gonna keep the, uh, the flash settings pretty low and uh, that will help to blend and look more natural. One big advantage uh, what you have with these uh, meters, with the special, uh, the new meters, you can take a reading for the flash and it shows you the percentage uh, of the flash contributing to overall exposure. So. Even right now, you know, I have the ambient light. I'm gonna take a meter reading for the flash. It shows me like uh, whatever reading I have and how much the flash will contribute to the overall exposure. And it's in like 20 to 40 percent 
of the flash contribution is the best uh, and uh, the most common way to blend in the flash. If you keep it on, on this percentage, it looks very natural. If it goes over 40%, of course, it looks more dramatic. It might be a look you like. It's nothing wrong with it. And uh, But you're going to see that your flash was used and the whole background goes uh, very dark. So I'm taking a, a flash uh, reading and it shows me right now uh, at 32 uh, uh, power on the flash, I can shoot at the f2.0 like, uh, at 1 over 100 shutter speed at ISO 100. And I kind of like, like these settings right now. I like the 2.0 aperture because, you know, it gives me a little bit more play and depth of the field. And we're going to take some pictures to see how it looks. I really like how the, the flash uh, contributes to the overall exposure. It nicely wraps the light around Lydia's face. I have my uh, cell box four feet from Lydia, just maybe six inches above uh, the center line of the cell box, above her uh, eyes, because the the light is coming pretty low. I don't want to raise the cell box way uh, too high to kind of change the direction of the light. I'm trying to keep it, maybe I'm going to raise it a couple of more inches, you know, small increments, another like four or five inches. And also I can bring it a little bit more to the side because I want to wrap the, the light on the shadow side of the face. I like how uh, nice and natural everything looks. I want to play with the settings uh, on uh, this flash, you know, so we're going to have uh, more uh, different looks. But I still see that the right side of Lydia is a little bit in, uh, in shadow. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my uh, my good old friend, the AD100. I'm going to have it on, on the same, uh, like behind the camera, for a, a feel light. I'm going to turn it on and uh, I'm going to dial it like really low settings, like 256 uh, of a, a power, because I don't need to, uh, too much light. I just need a little bit, you know, uh, an ambience. I need to lift up the, the overall exposure. I don't want to contribute, uh, anything to the uh, final shoot. Maybe it will be like 5%, you know, uh, contribution to the, the whole shoot, but very low settings. Also, I don't have a modifier on it because being a, a bare flash, we're going to spread the light everywhere. It becomes a bigger light. An, uh, an overall, you know, uh, scheme. When you use a modifier, it focuses the light. So it's kind of being too directional, and uh, I don't like that. We're going to take a picture to see how it looks. Beautiful. I like how everything looks right now, and like how uh, balanced the picture looks. And now it's time to start posing. Don't forget, take your time. If you don't have a meter, there are different ways to uh, start uh, establishing exposure. Use a gray card, or you're going to play with the settings on a camera, but we're going to take more time. For the sake of this video, and always is my preferred way, is to use a light meter. And uh, now it's time to start going to town and uh, start posing and have different uh, looks. I'm keeping, if I have to move around, I'm going to keep the lights at the same distance. Every five to 10 minutes, I'm going to take some uh, readings just to check in the exposure because right now we are late afternoon and the light, uh, uh, the ambient light is changing pretty fast. I want to make sure that we keep the exposure in check. So with a couple of uh, simple uh, steps, you can establish your base exposure, the flash uh, output, and right now it's time to go to town. Try to keep the flash always, you know, on the lower settings because you want to make it look as natural as possible. This is a feeling light, you know, mixing uh, the flash with ambient. You don't want to overpower too much the ambient in every situation. And special location like this, I want to show off some of the uh, the surroundings because it's a beautiful place. When you uh, adjust your uh, flash uh, settings and uh, a situation like this, you got to do it in very small increments and a third of a stop because uh, just a little bit of uh, uh, increase in power, it makes a dramatic uh, change in overall exposure. So take it, you know, up and down with a, a, a small steps. Do not uh, overdo it. Don't go full stop because it's not going to help uh, with the settings. I am shooting a, a rapid fire right now and the Godox V1 Pro is keeping up with uh, all my uh, shooting. I'm uh, cranking up now like 
firing up because the light is uh, fading out and I want to take uh, as many pictures as possible before uh, it's too late and I think it works fine. I'm moving uh, everything around. I uh, raise the, um, uh, my soft box and the light a little bit higher because here it's an open sky and I have some light coming from the top too and it's I think it feels better and it matches better the ambient being a little bit higher and uh, coming down uh, on Lydia. I really like uh, these pictures. I like how everything looks uh, in this location and I'm having a lot of fun. We changed some uh, lenses. We uh, changed some uh, location here. We locked the, we worked the, the whole area to uh, get uh, a nice different looks. And it's pretty much uh, an easy setup if you get it right from the beginning. Take your time. You know, make sure that you nail the ambient exposure, the, the flash settings. And after that, you're just going to have fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out my channel for more lighting tutorials and gear reviews. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.